Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we're going to talk all things family law with one of the most respected family lawyers in the state of Texas. Her story, just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started is slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team and the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, one of the top things that couples fight about is money, and obviously people are racking up credit card debt. We're supposed to go into a recession next year. Unfortunately, uh, next year promises to be a big year for divorce, and when you're considering a family law attorney, you want somebody who has a good reputation, and I can't think of anybody with a better reputation than my next guest, Melinda Eitzen from Duffy & Eitzen. Thanks Thank for coming on the show. Thank you. Oh, it's great to be here, I Jeff. know. Well, I, full disclosure, uh, Melinda and I had the pleasure of working together almost a decade ago and I was helping you promote a book back then but you're truly one of my favorite people along <laughs> this journey. Um, I want to uh, start at the beginning. So when you went to law school were you already thinking family law? No, no. I did it on so, accident. <laughs> really? What were you were like when you got to law school what were you thinking about doing? I knew I wanted to litigate which I do litigate in family law um, but I thought maybe business litigation it just you know you don't grow up thinking I'm going to be a divorce lawyer. <laughs> Well, and and you're you're you become part counselor. I mean, I can't even imagine all of the situations you've uh, been in where you're literally crying with your client. That's really what I like about it is it's helping real people with real problems. Yeah, and uh, I know people who uh, reach that point when the, you you just can't uh, fix the marriage and you are heading towards divorce. One of the things you're passionate about is collaborative law. Mm -hmm. uh, explain that to the person who's never heard of this before. Okay, well, so we have something in the family code, a statute that created collaborative mm -hmm. law. It's a non-court, more amicable process. We have, you have to have two lawyers, one for each client that's collaboratively trained, a neutral mental health professional is on the team and a neutral financial professional. And we carry the clients through a problem solving model to help them resolve their issues. And I think all couples fear, you know, what is this divorce going to do to our kids? And, mm -hmm. and uh, we both want to, I, I assume that you, were, you want the best for the person you're divorcing. Um, collaborative law is a, is a good avenue. Oh gosh, absolutely. It allows people to be their higher selves and not their worst selves. And litigation, we still try to settle our cases in litigation when we can, and some cases have to be tried. But litigation encourages people to be their worst selves, unfortunately. Collaborative really allows them to be respectful and to get a divorce in the most dignified way possible. You were telling me a story before we went on about how in collaborative law, you, you even have couples that are divorcing that both will refer business to you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so in litigation, sometimes the other side wants to shoot you, but in collaborative, because we're trying to help the whole family and we're all working creatively, the other side doesn't hate me and they actually get to know me because we meet together for two hours at a time. And I've had many cases where the opposing party, and we wouldn't really call them opposing in collaborative, but the other person, not the one I represented, later sends me work. Wow. That's <laughs> That's got to feel so good. And, and I'm sure that it's a you, nice compliment. you run into clients years later. You've been doing this for 28 years. You run into clients years later who hug you and say, thank God you were there during my time of need. We, um, I've been doing it so long now that I've actually divorced one of my client's children. Wow. So he was two when I represented her. Wow. He became an adult. He got married. He needed <laughs> Well, I said, oh, I've been doing this a long time. And I'm glad you're telling that story because Dallas is a big town but a small town and, you know, your reputation precedes you. And the fact that you have that 
uh, greater reputation that people are coming to you, you know, for second and third divorces. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> um, let's talk about litigation uh, because uh, sometimes there's an impasse and you actually do have to, uh, I, I use air quotes, go to war, but you can go to war and not destroy um, the two parties involved. Oh, yes. Okay, I'll tell you one of my favorite litigation stories. Uh, my client, the way the case started is he was served and he was not allowed to see his child. Protective order, you can't see the child. So he came and hired me and there was an allegation that he had a drinking problem. And he, of course, thought he did not or he was in denial might be the better way to say it. So I said to him, hey, let's go get you assessed. Let's go to this person I know who can do a substance abuse you know, mm -hmm. assessment. We don't ever have to tell anybody we did that. And then figure out what they say to do. So he kind of, later he told me, I went home and drank that night. I didn't want to go, but then I went. And long story short, he ended up getting help. We were able through the lawsuit to get him in normal relationship with his child. And he said, Melinda, I have a better relationship with my child than I ever had thanks to you. Wow, that, that's amazing. And um, a law firm is only as good as their people. Uh, we're going to put up your website and scroll down the website because I think since you and I worked together um, close to a decade ago, your team has grown. You've, yes. got a, you've got an enormous team. We have 12 lawyers in the firm now and two hired that aren't here yet that wow. are in law school. Wow. Um, tell us what you look for in a team member. You know, one thing that I like about our team is we have different specialties. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Mary Lee Lewis, one of my partners, she was a judge for 30 years. So she has that judicial brain. One of my lawyers was, an, he also does education law. He was a school psychologist before he became a lawyer. So he can help on the cases that involve anything about schooling, which sometimes can be kind of the centerpiece of the case. I have one lawyer who used to work in the domestic violence world for a women's shelter, helping defend against domestic violence. So I feel like everybody in the firm has been a nice ad because they have a special focus or background that complements and we can all draw on each other's resources. Yeah, and I'm gonna brag about Melinda. So my daughter, uh, her first marriage ended in divorce and um, she was shopping for attorneys on YouTube uh, best Dallas divorce attorney and your videos came up and Melinda had made a whole series of tip videos you know when do you need a uh, prenup and just all this education and my daughter found herself crying on the floor of her apartment just watching your videos and she knew she had found her attorney uh, she uh, ended up not going with you but when we met you for the first time, she was absolutely <laughs> starstruck. It was like she was meeting Beyonce. Um, so, she was more enthused than normal. <laughs> well, okay, so uh, the point being that um, every attorney has the magna cum laude, this and that on their website, but it doesn't necessarily make you like them, or it doesn't necessarily make you um, feel like they're the person to go into this, you know, really... Uh, difficult time in their lives. And so your compassion, your um, understanding of your clients is probably a critical part of your success. Thank you. Well, it's a very personal representation, as you're mentioning. So if you don't, if somebody is shopping for a lawyer and they don't feel that connection, they should keep shopping. I have a theory that people hire people very similar to themselves. So if they're kind of a reasonable maybe have a little bit more higher emotional intelligence, sure. then they're going to like somebody like that. If they're kind of mean, and <laughs> right, right, they're yeah. going to want a lawyer like that. And if they don't match in that way, it's a difficult client-attorney relationship. Sure. And I'm, I'm sure if somebody just calls the main number and they, don't, they haven't chosen one of your team members, you can actually assess, okay, this person would be perfect for this team yes, member. Yes, yes, yes. We also have a Spanish speaker, oh, so nice. that's a nice fit because, you know, we have a wonderful Spanish speaking community in Dallas Fort Worth area, and it's nice to be able to help them as well. But yes, definitely, we help say, okay, based on what I'm hearing, and some people prefer a man or a woman, you know, they right. just feel more comfortable. Sure. We're going to put up on the uh, screen your Facebook page. You've got a, a bunch of pictures. Was this a recent meeting? Or? Yes, I did a training. This is a great mental health group, um, and they help 
they're all Spanish and English bilingual completely, and they really like serving the Spanish speaking community. And I do trainings for mental health professionals because we need them in our community. So I help them both to be prepared for cross examination mm -hmm. if they're in a litigation, uh, and I teach them about HIPAA. Yes. And I also want to give you a chance to brag about your uh, your partner because you guys have been together now for 22 years. <laughs> Longer Which, than most people are uh, married. <laughs> all right, tell us tell us about uh, Lisa Duffy. So Lisa Duffy, um, she's probably been practicing law 35 years. And her background before family law, she did civil litigation. Mm. So she has a really strong, she's really strong in the business cases because she really understands business. And, uh, but she's been doing family law now uh, at least 20 something years. She's excellent. She's an outside the box thinker, creative, really passionate. Uh, she really wants to do a good job for her clients, passionate in her representation, but not unreasonable. Sometimes lawyers get too passionate and they lose the ability to be objective. The client is already there. We need to be objective right. for the client. Let me um, ask you about kind of trends because I, I know just in the last few years we've seen things like pup nups, which is uh, <laughs> who, who gets the dog. Um, I think you're also seeing the, the rise of the, the Gen Z, the millennial, where when I was growing up, uh, the mantra was, stick it out, kid. Life is not a bowl of cherries. Um, marriage is not perfect. And so um, I'm a baby boomer, and my parents have been married for 60 years. Uh, Anybody who's married for over 20 years now seems unusual. <laughs> so do you see a trend where is the next generation more likely to throw in the towel faster? I think they're less likely to get married to begin with. Okay. So a lot of them are just saying, why do you need to get married? They don't have the same um, moral, moral issues or religious pressures to marry, maybe that generations before did, or community pressure. So they're like, whatever. And now the strangest thing is old people are getting divorced. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, people who'd been married 40 years, like you said, our parents, our grandparents, they did not divorce. It didn't matter right. how bad it was. That's over. They're divorcing now. It's been socially acceptable long enough that they feel free to divorce and people are living long. So we are divorcing people who've been married 40 something years. Yeah. We're also, we're also seeing a lot more about celebrity divorces. I think about Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and, and now Tom Brady. Um, so those kinds of things were not digested by the media the way they are today. And it's on every screen. Right. No one, <laughs> no one gets away with anything anymore, do they? No, <laughs> There's a camera. They don't. They Everybody don't. has a cell phone. Uh, maybe some, some tips for the person who is considering a divorce on social media scrubbing. Because Oh, my word. Right. People will put stuff on yeah. social media that they have no business doing. Right. So in general, if you don't want it read in a courtroom, don't put it on social media. That's a good test. Right. And it's impossible to really delete anything. Mm. So you have to just not put it on there to begin with. Um, it will be found in red. What's scary is now we're seeing people do the deep fakes. Mm. And so sometimes you don't even know if it's real anymore. Really? Even the deep fake videos. So used to, if I had a you know, a text exchange and it appeared real, it was real. Now that's not necessarily true. So we really have to dig in to yes. make sure the evidence is real before we try to use it in court or, you know, be sure that we can attack it when it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I could talk to you all day. We're almost out of time. Uh, what would you like to leave people with? Oh, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, I think that when people are considering divorce, in my experience, most people don't jump to divorce. They are thoughtful about it and they kind of mourn the marriage while they're in it. But I think that they should talk to a mental health professional. It's really important when you're considering it and going through it to have that support. And it's not, you know, your head's not getting shrunk. It doesn't mean something horribly is wrong with you. It's just somebody who can support you through a hard time. Wow. Thank you so much for coming back into the studio. It's so great to it's see you. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> okay, we're going to end with the website, which is uh, DuffyandEitzen.com. The great Melinda Eitzen. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> it's great to be here. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.